Assalamu alaikum and all my thoughts are with our comrades in Bangladesh. Even today, uh, so many has given their lives. So, uh, inshallah, they're all in our prayers. And remember, Hasbunallah ibn Ayman Waqeel. Allah is enough for all of us. Inshallah, He will reward us with victory. And just only a few days, Inshallah, and this, this butcher of Bengal will be gone. Now, uh, as I said in my, in my last uh, video, it's, it's quite important to plan what next, right? And uh, you can see now uh, there's a lot of people who were not part of the revolution before, and everybody is now joining in, which is fantastic, it's good, yeah? But what the youth movements, you must remember that you cannot allow this country to go back to status quo. You just cannot do that, okay? So this is what I think, what I'm saying. Our country needs a fundamental structural change, fundamental structural change. Because the potential of you guys, what you have shown to us, to all over the world, that you are one of a kind. And with you being leading this country, Bangladesh, it will be one of the greatest nations, I have no doubt. It's a level of charisma, maturity, I, I don't think I've ever seen in anywhere in the world. It's unbelievable. Uh, what you have already displayed. So now my request to you will be uh, you've already won, right? Now all the dogs are already fleeing the country, so you can see what's happening. But of course, it will be one of our greatest of all job to make sure none of these people live anywhere in the world safe. We cannot give them safety. Wherever we are, the Bengali diaspora will make sure that we, we get hold of them, yeah? We make sure all their money, everything they have earned. This is a big campaign we have to do, yeah? But we have to get all the monies back and put this prison, in, uh, put these people in prison. It's really, really important, right? Right, I, I don't want to distract what I wanted to talk about today. So what I'm saying, so you can see now, a lot of people are joining in your revolution, which is great, but most of these people have got a self-interest, right? Now you really have to watch out for it. So you don't, you don't want the country to go to one of these old political parties again and we are back to scale one. No, cannot happen, right? As I said, there got to be new politics. There got to be new foundation for a new politics in the country, right? It's really important. So this is why constitution is so important. So I have been working on this constitution for a very, very long time now, right? I've been thinking a lot. And, of course, I'm not a solicitor, uh, but we all are citizens of the world. We can see what is going on all over the world, right? So, again, for me, there is no skin in the game for me. I've never done politics in my life. My dad always said, stay out of politics, because he knew how dirty Bengali politics was. And I never did, yeah? I never liked any of them. Uh, we've never seen any clever guys going to politics. It's all the idiots, yeah, who has got no other future, they went to politics, right? You know, th this is what we used to see when we were, we were kids. So, but again, very, very general statement, there are good people, honest people in politics, and our job is to find them, yeah? It's to find them people who serve. Now, of course, the constitution is really fundamental to this, yeah? So I, I, I would like to go through uh, this draft constitution which I think we need to go for a consultation to make sure we get all the expert opinions. I've got great, great uh, legal minds in Bangladesh, we need to get that input, make sure we get it right. But I want to just tackle uh, first few of the key, key issues I think we have to, we have to address and then probably we just have a quick overlook. Now, what I want to go before, right, uh, is at the beginning, as I said, 
I, I don't think, I, I think we should be secular state. So there is no need uh, for uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim at the beginning. I, I, I don't think it's appropriate and I don't think it makes any difference to be honest with you. We want complete religious freedom. If there's a complete religious freedom, freedom of speech, Islam will flourish. Within 90% of the population being Muslim, Islam will flourish in Bangladesh. We don't need any constitutional coverage. We don't need that. Islam, Islam is very, very a strong faith and it can stand for itself. So as I said, I think there's no need for any of that. Right. So now I think I would like to go through some of the uh, key uh, parts of this constitution. And the main one being the rights and duties. So you can see, I think I've got said freedom of speech, assemblies. I think a lot of them are already in our constitution, but they don't work. And then I think this is what we have to make sure, okay, why is it that they're not working? Yeah, and then how do we make them work? So that comes to again, having a, a legal framework is one thing, implementing is a totally different thing. So you need to have constitutional checks and balances to make sure anarchy, dictatorship does not does not take our land once again, right? So I think so let's 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 start with this. So freedom of speech, I think these are already pretty standard. Uh, I think this one, I have put some meat into uh, freedom of press and independent journalism, right? So this is one of the things I think I spent some of the time doing. So of course, uh, fundamental to any democracy. Democracy has got issues, problems, yeah? We can see all over the world. You get thugs, get elected. Donald Trump gets elected, yeah? Because of democracy, right? So when you have the masses, who can easily be manipulated by misinformation, wrong information. And again, it all done mainly by press in, in the West, right? And we have, Sheikh Hasina has done, sorry, I shouldn't mention that name. That dictator bitch has done that to Bangladesh for a very, very long time, right? So now, so how, how do we prevent this, right? So this is what I think I go into details, right? So state shall recognize upon the freedom of spirit, which is fine. The press, so they say, first of all, freedom of press, that's the general statement, which is fine, I think. Uh, everybody can, it's kind of universal. Then we say prevention of media ownership concentration. This is very important. So what we don't want, we don't want a Rupert Murdoch in Bangladesh. We don't want a, a monetary, a capitalist mafia take a hold of our press. People with money control the press, they control the narrative. Cannot happen, right? So, measure be taken to prevent media ownership, concentration by autocrats, manipulators, ensure a diverse and pluralistic media environment, right? Now, of course, in itself, this is a whole process of consultation. How do we achieve that? But that's not the job of the Constitution. Constitution gives you the principle, right? And then you, the legislature will then legislate. Translate that and legislate how do we do that. State shall ensure transparent and fair media ownership, regulation to prevent monopolies and promote, promote com, uh, competition. Right? Very important, right? So we want the true, true journalist to flourish. Yeah? We want the true journalist to flourish. Who comes to journalism to do, uh, to give the news, to be fair, right? Uh, this is what we want. Right? Next is promote. Promotion of independent journalism. Now, this is very important in this day of technology. Anybody with, a, with an iPhone can be a journalist, right? And the more independent voices you have, the more truth, more to local news you're going to get, right? So this is, again, very, very important that we promote independent journalism, not controlled by few mafias, right? Because they have got money, they've got power, they can over the airwaves, no more, yeah? So you really promote this in the, uh, independent journalism in villages and towns and cities everywhere, yeah? So this is brilliant. And again, the, it comes to, of course, you don't want misinformation like in the West, yeah? That can cause mayhem in the country. So again, I'll come to that later. And the non-biased reporting and ethical standard. So then again, who can be a journalist? We have a whole, we can uh, look, look at the academics, uh, we have a whole ethical standard process. Now it can be legislated or it could be independently regulated. Again, these are all, all question for, for discussion, yeah? But it will be good to have a, a legislature who can set up the standards and there is a compliance protocol in place to make sure that people 
are regularly looked at, people can complain, and then anybody breaking those uh, ethical standards are held into account. Very important, right? And then regulatory oversight, that's what I meant, yeah? So there is a body who will be regulating this, right? And then, uh, yeah, so that is our uh, press. Yeah, again, we can expand on it, but I think there's enough meat in there to expand on to make sure that we have a true independent journalism in the country, right? Then we have got, all these are pretty much uh, uh, very standard for a lot of the uh, modern constitution. But here is the one I think I've edited, I've uh, added, because we have had that in our country for a while, not only this dictator, people before the detention and torture. So I think, again, I think we should, we should have a, a specific uh, articles for that, protection of protection and torture. Uh, no person should be subjected to, right, so this is the general one, in fact, I've got a whole, whole section on it, right, so I'll go to that in a minute, okay. Uh, because this is what's happening at the moment, we stop that, right? So we've got all the other stuff, privacy, security, all this again. I think nobody will really quibble with this thing. They're very good. Yeah. So prohibition of torture, kidnapping, and extra judicial activities. This is because it's keep happening in the country, despite having a general, general uh, article. I think we've got to read expander, so you can see. I could have really now. One can say this is a bit reactive. Yeah, because this happened in Bangladesh, so being reactive and then having this article. Well, I think a, uh, if you look at human history, it always happened. It is innate in man to do this thing, to do these evil things. So I think there got to be a constitutional protection, right? So here, then I, I've really expanded on it, yeah? Prohibition of torture, prohibition of kidnapping and forced disappearance, what happens? Uh, political uh, protection of political opponents and critics, prohibition of extrajudicial activities, oversight and accountability mechanism. So it is quite detailed. Legal remedies and compensation, training and education, very very important. So you can see it's very very detailed constitutions, where it's taught. Yeah. So it's, and people are educated. People, people know about these things. And then once you're educated, you know what protections in place, what rights you have got. Even like if people on the street know their rights, then it's easy for them to then uh, because any constitutional rights, a a rickshawala should be able to go to the court and fight for his constitutional rights. Okay, he shouldn't need to spend loads and loads of money on solicitors to do that. Right. So this is what you have to make the whole. A legislature very accessible to people so that people can fight for their rights and unless that happens there will never be this kind of protection so you can see it's quite quite detailed right so this is one of the clauses I wanted to uh, disclose uh, discuss separately and then you've got all the other social security uh, right? you have done that right then directive principles of state policies now these are also pretty pretty standard uh, stuff uh, and one I think I've added is the protection, I think protection of environment. This, this, I've got a, uh, let's have a look. Um, yeah, I think under these I've got some new extra additions. Uh, protection of environment, right. Uh, no, this is a, sorry, this is a general statement, is it? Yeah, yeah this is a general statement. Let's have a look. I've got a... Uh, sorry, let me just go back again. Right, so these are basic stuff, I think. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go on. I think I have some details later on. These are general statements. Structure of government. So here, uh, this is, of course, very, very, very important. Now, uh, executive, legislature, and judiciary. Okay, and we'll go in details later on. And I think one of the sections uh, down below, of course, how do you... I make it, of course, here. Uh, let me very, very roughly go to the fundamental uh, element here. I, I'm not really sure what structure we have right now. Uh, whatever it is, it's not working because we haven't got an in the, like, for example, prime minister can become a dictator. There's no other power, power that can hold her into, into account. So let's have a look in this executive we talked about. Yeah. So we talked about the president. So here you've got an elected uh, president of the head of state. Electoral college votes. So this is like a uh, president is independent, and president can 
prorogue the parliament. Yeah, it can win. So the crisis we have got, if you had a functional system, the president said, here we go, I'm proroguing the parliament. No power is in the prime minister. President assume the assume the power, and then we we stop the anarchy. But we haven't got that now. Look, we are in a really uh, a bit of a mess because I think we used to have a caretaker government uh, that was much better idea, but that has been taken off now. So we've got a, a a dictator dictating, right? So again, very very important. Again, I think another thing to mention very important. Nobody can stop this, no matter what constitution you have got. Say you have got another big ruling party comes to the major, so they control two thirds of the houses of parliament, and they come and change the constitution, right? Again, how do you how do you prevent that? We really have to think about that, so that constitution is some, not something you can play about with. Yeah, there got to be really robust legislation to make sure that can't happen, right? So we'll come to that later. So here we have a president. Uh, you've got. Uh, a prime Minister, so we've got completely separate power, and then Council of Ministers, yeah, and then we have got the, like other legislative things, which again will come to the uh, yeah later on. Okay, so they they are again. I think a lot of things are already in place, uh, but uh, some changes are necessary. Yeah, make sure they work. At the moment, they don't work, right? So then we talked about federal and regional governance, very, very important this as well, and local governance. Right now, we need to also make sure that there's some autonomy in the regions, yeah, to make sure people locally can make a lot of decision, decentralized decision making. So yes, we have got some, uh, uh, some of these articles already in place, but again, it's all about modernizing it, make sure no only, so there is not a focus on purely on, on Dhaka. So everybody comes to Dhaka for work. No, you have to have regional developments. That's why you need the autonomy of the regions who can then declare zones for investment can come in. So you develop the whole country. You, you develop the whole country rather than just one particular part of the country. Again, uh, that down, comes down to infrastructure, a lot of things, yeah? So that, uh, it will be, uh, again, we can discuss and add uh, more meat to, to these clauses. But again, as I said, a lot of them are already in our current constitution and they are universal in a way. Protecting minority rights, again, I think we have got, got them, but uh, we can definitely change them. Economic and social politics, environmental protection, now this is, again, it's a big one. Uh, we have got some very general statement, but I think we have to make it modern. We know what climate change is doing, and especially what is going to happen to Bangladesh, right? So we really have to, uh, this is where a lot of the thinking needs to go in, again, with a lot of consultation. One of the things, so these are all standard stuff, uh, but, uh, which probably not in our current constitution, but uh, in the, a lot of the modern constitution in the world, we have got all these policies, uh, environmental conservation, mitigation against climate change, protection of natural resources. This is the one I have added, uh, it's a re how, how to protect our rivers and canals. Now, I remember when we used to be in a school, uh, I think it was, I think it was uh, Ziyahu Rahman, I think who did a, a Karl, I said it's Khan, <laughs> it's not Khan, it should be Karl, uh, Karl Conan Prokopo. I think it was fantastic, I was only, I can't remember, seven, eight, I don't know, I was very young. But again, I, even I joined, yeah, and I, th I think it was a brilliant idea, I don't know to what level it was successful, but it was a brilliant, brilliant idea, and I think the reason I say that because the most of the problems right now comes in Bangladesh because these water flows are completely blocked. Remember, Bangladesh is a country of water, canals and rivers. It's beautiful. It's beautiful and it's so fertile land. But if the water can come in and go out very, very easily, if this, all these canals are well maintained, and if you go to any villages, all the, all the canals are taken over. People just fill them all up and they're growing vegetables on them, yeah? And this cannot be right. This cannot be right. It's a disaster for the nation, right? We've got to reclaim every single canal we had, registered canal, government property taken over by people. No, it has to, these have to come reposition again. And I said, I think, I've mentioned here, I think similar to those done in the earlier days, we involved kids from schools and colleges, the volunteers, to make this national effort, we want to reclaim our canals once again. Make the water flow, make the fish flow, and it's what a beautiful nation that will be. Anybody who goes to uh, 
uh, uh, Netherlands, they have done a whole country of artificial canals. We have got natural canals, yeah? And you can see the potential, what these canals can do in terms of our fishing industry, our agricultural industry, is unbelievable. Unbel and transportation, the green transportation, yeah? I remember when we were kids, we should take boats, beautiful, yeah? We should, it was to be a beautiful thing, yeah? Now, we have to reclaim that land. It's a beautiful land. I know it's in my memory, but a lot of you probably haven't seen it, yeah? And then again, we reclaim that. Just think about Amsterdam and think about Rotterdam, think about all over Netherlands, you see the canals. Our canals are much more beautiful than that. Beautiful, because they are natural. They are natural canals. We need to prevent that. Now here, so I've got a long, long framework here. How do we do that, right? So again, a need for a lot of consultation. But I think it is so important. We really, really uh, get our water flows running again. Yeah, I know there's not much we could do uh, in relation to the flood water coming from India. Again, that is a geopolitical matter. Okay, that is a, a big, big thing because the way where we are as a nation, we are surrounded by India. Yeah, so we are. are sovereignty in a way is compromised because this natural disaster a lot of them if it was a greater india it wouldn't be it would be shared by different region right now it doesn't happen right it's the selfish attitude of india to just to just de destroy our nation okay and then again we got to address that internationally again look at that support a uh, student of our country you're getting in india and this Gen Z's in India, they are focused as you are. So you work with them, right? They're not BJP thugs. So BJP thugs, their days are also numbered. This, these morons, these racist Nazis, yeah, they're gonna go from India too because the new generation will reject them, right? There will be freedom in Kashmir. You'll see it, yeah. So this new generation, like you, they also think like you. Then these problems, if you work for a bigger cause of climate change. You can overcome it, yeah? So again, stage two. Stage one, you put your own houses in order. So we do those environmental protection, environmental changes. No matter what other people do in all over the country, forget about them. We protect our own environment, number one, okay? Then I've got, so this is quite an important bit. Then we have uh, national defense security. Again, here, I think I have gone into a little bit more details in terms of uh, how uh, the army is this, all the security services, how they got to be uh, independent and how they should be, uh, the power of government, how to influence them, there got to be protection that we don't have, uh, right, right now, government can use these forces any way they want. The whole purpose of this, that this sort of thing does not happen again. Again, I've got a whole section on military coup. How we, here, yeah, yeah. Prevention of military coups and ensuring civilian protection. This is, these are very important. So that, yes, as you say, we have, a, we have an army, but we want them to work for our security, yeah? Not you, be used on us, right? It's for our national security, national defense, right? So again, so I have, again, we probably need some uh, other great minds. Again, I have, I have tried my best to look at uh, different risks factors and, and to mitigate them uh, uh, again uh, from a layman's perspective. Uh, I, I, I believe I have followed some of the best standards, best practices all over the world and I have adopted them. But again, we can have a consultation, we can make it very, very relevant to our nation, right? Then next one, I think for me, this is one of the, one of the most important one is Ethical standard due diligence of political office holder. Now, this is for me, is probably the most important. As I said, I think in one of my videos I've mentioned that we cannot allow any Tom Dick and Harry to become, to become a political office holder. We just can't. We can't allow it. And as you see, a lot of them are now, now on the camera, just trying to their, to their bit. I'm sorry, you must remember, this war was not fought, fought by them. They've been living under these dictators for nearly 20 years. They've, none of them given their life. None of them. In my view, they've got no right to lead this country. No right whatsoever. 
So your job as young people, make sure none of these people come anywhere near politics. As I say, I repeat, none of them should come anywhere near politics. And it's your opportunity to shape it now. If you don't do it now, if you allow this, this all historical, yeah, guys who's manipulated our system for such a long time, if you allow them to be involved in this again, you will never have a nation you dream of. You're not going to have it. So it's so important, as I said, set them up. Who can be a politician? Yeah, I know it's a bit, it sounds a bit socialistic, but I think, uh, or idealistic, but I think it's really, really important. Here we go. So I think I have some thoughts, not, not conclusive. I'm sure you guys are geniuses. You can come out with your own ideas. So one of the things is prohibition of overseas investment. Anybody who comes into politics, you can't have assets overseas. That's it. Gone. Why would you have assets overseas? Why you have a citizenship overseas? Yeah? And all financial interest must be declared held within the borders of Bangladesh. So everything you have, you have to disclose. Before you come to politics, you have to disclose. Right? Okay? And my, my, the protection should be that anybody who comes to politics, first of all, of course, we, we, all the criminals, all the stealing of national funds and stuff, we get rid of them now. We go after their wealth first, okay? So you filter them all out. Then you come to other people. Of course, there will be some people who are naturally rich. They've got a lot of money. You can't really stop them coming to politics, right? Which is fine. They can come. As long as they have got their good heart, their genuine, they want to do good for the nation, you can't stop them because they will be talented, right? So what do you do? You, you say, okay, before you come to politics, disclose your wealth. So they say, okay, I have got, say, two crores. So every year he gets audited. So, okay, if you've got two crores, how do you have five crores tomorrow? How? You can't have it. You can't. So because, again, we'll come to that. There will be salary there they're going to get, and that will be their own, only income. And they will really struggle to live with that salary. So then they'll, they won't be able to save lakh uh, lakh or kuri kuri taka from their salary. No. So their wealth should not go up. Again, very important. A reg a regular uh, uh, audit of wealth. That's what I meant here, yeah? So we audit their wealth, make sure they don't benefit just by having a political position. And I'm not talking about MPs here, I'm talking about any political appointments, every single one of them. Prohibition of second passport overseas assets, as I said, I mentioned that. Restriction of overseas medical treatment, you're not allowed to go out of the country unless you're approved, yeah? So for example, some treatment is not available in the nation, just like any other. Basically, your rights should be same as ordinary people of Bangladesh who cannot afford to go overseas, yeah? They can't. So again, you stop that. The, so that will drive them to make sure our healthcare system is fit for purpose. Right now it's not. They destroyed the whole system. All the doctors in Bangladesh are mafias. They're mafias. Yeah? You've got to stop that. So there's they got to be a, a whole restructuring of the whole healthcare system. And one of the starting point is you do that. So make sure they, the, the legislature has got incentive to make sure we've got a good quality health in the country, right? Then, application to immediate family members. A restriction outlined in this article shall only be a spouse, children, dependents of political holders and the candidates. Immediately, family members shall not be subject to the same agent and prohibition to prevent conflicts of interest and corruption. Shall be. So, so they say, okay, I haven't got wealth, but I can give it to my kids, my family, my wife. No, everybody's under this problem. So, you cannot, basically the whole purpose of it, that you cannot misuse public money, yeah? And of course, it's very strict, this is very strict. And you have to police it, remember. So again, uh, open for consultation, yeah? But I think, as I said, I think when you have young minds, you can think idealistically. When you have involved all these old nutcases, yeah? They have got vested interest. You, that's why you don't, you don't listen to them, you don't. You listen to experts, yeah, but who are genuinely the only general think about the people, not about the elite. Remember, the whole purpose of this, you do not think about the elite. You think about the common people. Common people of Bangladesh, yeah? You want them to, to serve them. Anybody who wants to serve them has that genuine intention. You want to talk to them, yeah? You want to bring them on board. You, you want to get them to help, all right? Very, very important, remember, yeah? A lot of, lot of idiots will, will be around you now. Reject them, okay? Pick amongst them the best ones. 
Okay, enforcement and penalties again, very, very strict transparency and public disclosure. So I think I've got quite a lot of very good, strong statements here. Again, we can have a uh, discussion and consultation. Then I've got a whole section on prevention of military coups and ensuring civilian control here. I've got a big section here, all right? Again, I've, ad I've addressed some of the things, but I'm sure that other people, yeah, uh, more learned than me, can, can really contribute a lot towards making this uh, more robust, yeah, uh, in terms of the Constitution, right? So just let me go back again, I've done the, I've done the, done the, uh, this is, this is one of the biggie, right? So, National Strategic and Exe Executive Committee, so NSEC. So, this is, of course, one of the ideas I have. Uh, I'm not sure, in terms of the caretaker government, how detailed our constitution was, and then, of course, it's gone now. But this is, no, this is similar, but not really. I think my whole idea here is this, this committee is going to be it's going to be a very, very powerful committee, yeah? And again, this is not, it doesn't have to be political committee. You, you, sh you should have the freedom to bring in non-partisan talents from our nation, from overseas, yeah? Anybody who is good at what they do, so if you've got the best mind in terms of uh, monetary policies and budget, hire them from overseas, yeah? Get the best of mind so that we've got, the whole point of this committee is this, You've got a, a structure, a, a foundation of a nation that, that does not, uh, that basically has got this monetary discipline, social, dis all the disciplines in place. These are like, I call them technocrats, yeah? So, because they know how a system, they're more of a, as I say, process people, yeah? They're more of a civil servant, they're process people. They know how to run a country. They're not political minded, they're not politicians, yeah? So, having them, uh, Independent, non-partisan, makes the country very, very stable. Right now, we haven't got it. All the appointments are political appointments, right? So here, let me just quickly go through this. So, NSEC shall be established to ensure continuity, stability, effective governance during the power vacuum of national emergency government transition in another critical period. Non-partisan body composed of individuals with expertise and knowledge of the full for, uh, knowledge necessary to fulfill its mandate, right? So as I said, I think buzzwords are there, non-partisan. Yeah, talented individuals, and then they come in. So, for example, the, uh, election when the election is done, uh, election is declared, the government resigned, president resigned, prime minister resigned. This committee takes over. Yeah, and then they carry out the whole true, un, uh, f uh, true and fair election, and then they hand over the power to the civilian government once again. Right. So, again, army does not come in anywhere. You can see. Yeah. So, these committee, again. How we will make this committee is so important, right? This is what it is. Composition, here I said, permanent secretary of all ministries who are non-political appointment. I'm saying, so for example, every single ministry, we've got permanent secretaries, show chiefs, yeah? They, again, their appointments, they're not political appointments, but these appointments will be non-partisan, talented people, yeah? You bring in the best, best from all over the world to be these, your secretaries and they have got no political affiliation, yeah? They might have, of course, everybody has got a political view, but they, they have, you should pick the people who are non-partisan by their faith. And they, they, when they make policies, it comes out with, with the agreed protocol that is for the best for the country, yeah? So they are not, they have to be non-partisan. Now then, think about that. In every single ministry, remember these churches, they run the ministries, basically, because they've got control over the ministers come and go, most of them are idiots, yeah? Most of them are idiots. They're political people, they're not like a, they don't understand the gritty, yeah? So, of course, Shachib do all the work for them. And, and we have got all political appointees, corrupt, they're destroying, yeah? The bribes and fraud everywhere, okay? So, this is what it comes in. So, and now, the Shachib, of course, those appointments got to be right. And all these shachips, all the secretaries are part of the National Executive Committee. So you can see how, because they, they are the one who runs every single ministry. Then they, in return, also a member of this, this whole committee, 
So then you can see how this com committee is capable of running the country. <laughs> because ultimately these ministries run the country, the civil service. And this committee, they are part of the committee, right? And on top of that, additional members with relevant expertise appointed to ensure the diverse and capable committee, right? So not only the secretaries, now you bring in other people. You bring in people from judiciaries. You bring people from the security service, the defense, to make it more and, and external people. You can bring social workers, you can bring uh, personalities, yeah, a great personality. You can, you can, like, you can bring people uh, uh, that can be non-political, but they have got a lot of influence in the country, or, or a lot of people who are intellectuals, yeah, they do a lot of research work. All I'm saying, all the talent you need, you bring them under this committee, right? And then this committee becomes very, very powerful. And one of their main job will be when, of course, there is no government that runs the country, when there is government, they become the, so I use the words, strategic. They become the advisor to the government. They sell government, look, do this, do this. So government doesn't work for a five-year plan. It works for a 20, 25 years plan. Like, when you look at China, China doesn't work for five years. That's the West House, that's where they're collapsing. So when you have got a fundamental stability at that level, you'll be thinking long-term, yeah? And this is what the job of this strategic committee is. You see how powerful it is. It could be great for our country. So we make all the right investment. I mean, for me, the way I see it, we will be the powerhouse, powerhouse of Asia. Yeah? We have got so much talent. In the technology industry, we can lead. In, in uh, manufacturing, we can lead. We can lead the world. Yeah? Because we've got such a talented group of young people, man. We can do anything. So again, when you make this structural change, is the future is possible. The future we want is possible, okay? So functional responsibilities, government and continuity stability, I think I've discussed that, yeah? So under this, you can see there's quite a few article, election oversight, advisory role, I've discussed that. Appointment and remuneration, again, very, very important, yeah? So they will be the remuneration committee for all of the civil service, yeah? So anybody, they can't just pay us, you don't want to pay them too little, then you wouldn't get the talent. Poor people is not gonna come to politics because you are not paying them well. So MPs, all the political appointees, local councils, you have to pay them well so they can live a decent life. They don't want to live a luxurious life, but they have to be able to live a decent life. Okay, that's so important. That's why remuneration committee is very important. They decide remuneration for all the civil servants, including the prime minister and the president. I think I mentioned it here, right? Okay, so and then most of the adv advisory councils, as I said, again, they're, the remuneration package is, is another, another particular issue. My personal view is this, you want to bring as many people as possible who are, as I said, uh, because uh, all the shachibs in, the, in this uh, is already gonna be part of the uh, remuneration uh, uh, the committee, but you can say, it's, uh, Turk is the voting for the Christmas here, because, because they are the member of this, and they will, of course, pay them higher wages, right? Okay, because all the shachims are here, they will say, we're going we're gonna to pay ourselves more money. So that's, I think, uh, a bit of a uh, gray area here, but I'm sure we could come with a mechanism on that to mitigate that risk, okay? So policy and strategic planning, oversight and accountability, crisis management and response, public management, uh, engagement and communication, Nonpartisan ship and integrity. Again, you can see how, how details have gone into this. Coordinating with other constitutional bodies. Yeah, how does it work with other people? Reporting and accountability. Right. So, we've got a fair bit of, of meat in here. Again, needs a lot of thinking, a lot of consultation to make sure to make it very, very, very robust. Right. Okay. So, I'm just taking you through the key, key element which I think is essential right now. Uh, right. So, I've done that. The foreign trees is again very, very basic, and then I've got other schedules. So yeah, so basically I have covered the main aspect I wanted to cover, but there's a lot in here, uh, which is a total change or total update from our current constitution, which is kind of dated and also not fit for purpose. So it has got a lot of uh, uh, modernity in it, yeah, so that we are a nation of free people, yeah, we have, we have got, we, we stand for all the basic human rights, yeah, we, we, we do all that, okay, which is, of course, uh, is, is a gay thing, uh, a lot of the time, 
in the West, they talk about human rights, but they don't really implement it. We really want to implement it, right, in our nation. And we become uh, the symbol. You want to become the symbol of democracy when democracy is dying. Democracy is dying all over the world. So we know why they are dying. For example, in America, there is no democracy. Because elections, when elections are manipulated by social media, which is controlled by a certain forces, and, and your public just votes and you basically elect a dictator. That is, that is the, what can, you don't, you'd rather live in China, yeah? You can see what Chinese people has done. Communism has done for Chinese people. It took them from where they were to where they are now. They're leading the world, yeah? Yes, they don't have freedom, but it's a great economic success stories, right? But of course, we don't want that because we are a nation of free people. And you can see now, this is what who we are, yeah? The British couldn't suppress us. Pakistan couldn't suppress us. And these dictators couldn't suppress us. So we are free people. So we have got natural inclination. And especially, I think, if you're a Muslim, that's embedded in our faith. So we want to be free. So we have got no other choice but to be democratic. But we've got to be aware aware where the fourth line is in democracy. And you have to have the mitigating factors built into your constitution. So to make sure those forces does not infect your democracy. So you protect the democracy. And this democracy then will be a democracy everybody will work towards. Yeah? Everybody. Because you haven't got it anywhere in the world. We'll be the first one to do it. Right? It is very possible. You know why it's possible? Because you Gen Z's are in charge. You see the world differently. You haven't got the corrupt mind. Okay? So I think it's been a long, long video. I have not touched on it, but you, you can see the details. I think, uh, yeah, it is this website, which is called My Free, My Free World. So this is the website, and it has got, it's called My Free World slash Bangladesh dash constitution. So you can go and you can, it's all linked, so you can go and, and check everything at the, right at the end. You've got a, you can register and you can start the consultation process. If you've got any suggestion changes, you could, you could make them, okay? That's the whole purpose of this, of this platform. Again, for disclosures, I'm not interested in the politics. I always hated politics and don't like it. For me, uh, I want this nation, as I said, to be one of the one of the best nation in the world. Okay, this is the only thing I want, and uh, I have got no other no skin in the game. They yeah, are not interested at all. All right. So thank you very very much. Zakallah khair. Salam alaikum.